While it is undeniable that Harley-Davidson is one of the most recognizable motorcycle manufacturers in the world, the company has struggled in recent years owing to shifting customer tastes, stiffer competition, and other market factors. The company's recent fiscal year-end report for 2022, however, has shown some encouraging signs. Investors and fans of Harley-Davidson have taken notice of the company's record profit per unit, which is more than at any time in the past decade. A definitive profit per unit figure will be released soon, but early indications suggest that the company's recent cost-cutting efforts may be to credit for this rise in profitability. Some have questioned whether or not Harley-Davidson can maintain such growth in the long run, despite the fact that it appears to be good news at first glance. The selection of Jochen Zeitz as Harley-Davidson's new CEO in May 2020 is one aspect that could affect the company's long-term profitability. His appointment has resulted in a considerable rise in the company's stock price, which has gone from the low 20s to the mid-50s since his arrival. This demonstrates that shareholders have faith in Zeitz's ability to steer the company towards success. Yet to gain a more complete view of the company's performance, it is necessary to look beyond stock prices and profits per unit. Towards the end of 2022, Harley-Davidson's three divisions had a combined revenue of nearly $1 billion from their motor company and financial services divisions, but a loss from their Livewire division brought the total revenue down to over $740 million. That the company still has room for improvement in every metric shows that it still has some work to do. The Livewire division was treated as a standalone entity for the first time in Harley-Davidson's most recent business update. The interesting shift from Harley-Davidson's previous approach of treating Livewire as part of the company rather than its own division. It is estimated that Harley-Davidson still owns 75% of Livewire after the Spark merger that resulted in the spin-off of the company. Yet shortly after the merger, investors fled, ostensibly because forecasts showed a negative net. Due to this, Harley-Davidson had to keep Livewire running by pouring additional money into it. Reports indicate that Harley-Davidson currently owns roughly 90% of Livewire. In 2022, Livewire sold just over 600 units, up from 461 in 2021. However, in the last three months of the year, the company only managed to sell 69. Even while annual sales were up, the results for the last quarter were worrying. It's also worth noting that while many people, including Harley-Davidson CEO, think electric vehicles are the future, some people question if the expected adoption rates are realistic. Whether or not electric vehicles will become the norm remains to be seen, but Livewire is still a key component of Harley-Davidson's business strategy. Harley-Davidson's retail sales have also been declining, and not just because of Livewire. Retail sales fell 12% in the United States and 8% globally in 2022. The company's long-term viability and profitability are at risk if this pattern continues. There are more motorcycles on dealer lots in Q4 2022 than there have been at any time since Jakin Zeitz took over as CEO in 2020, which is a worrying trend. This may be a sign that the company is having trouble moving merchandise, which might be due to a number of issues, including the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the rise of e-commerce. To combat this, a number of retailers are running promotions that are quite rare in recent years. Free Stage 1 upgrades on touring models. These changes show that Harley-Davidson is making an effort to increase sales and stay competitive in a dynamic industry. Harley-Davidson's global sales are down 8%, thus the question now is how they manage to improve their revenue by 8%. Well, the pricing of their goods is large to credit for a near 6% rise in revenue. For the first time since 2014, the corporation turned a profit in 2022, with a per-unit profit of $3,500. It's worth emphasizing, though, that Livewire and the company's financial services aren't factored into this profit margin. In addition, car dealerships need to turn a profit, which drives up the final price. Harley-Davidson's product prices have increased by around 3% annually, which is not wildly out of step with inflation. The difficulty, however, is that the prices of other, more basic goods and services like bread, eggs, and gasoline are also rising steeply, leaving prospective motorbike owners with less money in their pockets. And since the beginning of 2019, Harley-Davidson has cut the price of all of its models, even the more cheap ones, by around 30%. The question of whether or not Harley-Davidson's current pricing policy will further lower sales is weighing heavily on my mind. While it is encouraging to see that the company is profitable and maintaining prices at or below the rate of inflation, we do not want the brand to become unaffordable to anyone except the wealthy. If sales keep dropping and prices keep going up, 
Harley-Davidson might become a boutique brand, according to many customers. Some could say that all that needs to be done is to drop the price per unit by a few thousand dollars. Nevertheless, we doubt that a modest price decrease will result in appreciably higher annual sales. We estimate that a price cut of more than $3,000 per device would be necessary to significantly boost sales, but this would also result in a loss of revenue. Others argue that Harley-Davidson should develop a cheaper motorcycle in an effort to boost sales, despite the fact that this would cut into the company's profit margins. This plan would greatly increase Harley-Davidson's customer base, which would boost sales of apparel, gear, and services. Not the CEO, but the major stockholders are at fault. A stunning 37% of Harley-Davidson stock is owned by only five institutions, including the Vanguard Group, H Partners, and BlackRock. Investors are less likely to call for a strategy shift if earnings per share and net income are both rising. During the previous CEO's tenure, 2015 to 2020, the price per unit steadily dropped, ultimately leading to his ouster. Although Harley-Davidson is becoming more profitable for investors, customers may find it less enticing to buy a new bike due to rising prices and a weak economy. While the increase in price may deter some potential purchasers, others may decide to refurbish their vintage motorcycles. While evaluating Harley-Davidson's current situation, it's helpful to keep in mind the various viewpoints that may be taken into account. An improvement in profitability and net income is encouraging to shareholders. The majority of shareholders, especially those with a high stake in the business, should approve of the current course of action. But from the perspective of the consumer, inflation and rising prices can make buying a new Harley-Davidson less affordable. Those who have followed the legendary company for a long time may feel betrayed and frustrated as a result. Some people are worried that Harley-Davidson may become an exclusive brand for the wealthy. Meanwhile, there are viable solutions that could satisfy both investors and customers. Producing a loss leader or entry-level motorbike, for instance, might boost sales, attract new riders to the Harley-Davidson family, and enhance revenue from subsequent sales of spare parts, accessories, and servicing. A win-win for everyone would be achieved by figuring out how to lower the entry price of Harley-Davidson motorcycles. So that is all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you next time.